Night Timber X, 1.2 meter. We're gonna fly this thing without slats on 2200 30C Smart Pack. We're just in our regular middle rates. In fact, I don't even know if I set up any dual rates in Expo. I did not. We didn't do that in the radio setup, so we'll do it right now, actually. Throttle cuts on. We're gonna go straight to ailerons. We're gonna make our assignment to switch F. My normal status quo is 100, 100. We'll drop this down to like, we'll just go down to like 80. And then on this, we'll actually do negative expo. A 15, you're like, what the heck, Brian? Yep, that's right. And then we'll turn up expo to like 25, and then we'll do just like 5% uh, expo on ailerons. Elevator, we're gonna immediately make an assignment to switch F. On the top setting, we're 100. We're going minus 15 on that. We'll do 10% on that because we did a little extra throws. And then we'll do 30%. Whoops. And then we'll drop this back down to like 80%. And then on rudder, we're going to make our assignment to switch F. On switch one, we'll put it on minus 15. I'll show you what I mean by that, guys. We'll go minus 10, excuse me, we'll do plus 10. And then on this, we're gonna go plus 30, and we'll drop that down to 80 as well. So what this is gonna do, guys, is on the top setting, I'm gonna have the crazy 3D mode. On the middle setting, I'm gonna have the normal, I'm, I wanna fly it for enjoyment mode. And then on this, I'm gonna be like high speed passes, low, close, whatever. I want it to be nice and spongy and soft and easy to fly. And then in the middle, that's regular, and the top is crazy, okay? So we're going to start out in the middle. We're going to go back out. Throttle cut is on. It's been tested. We are out of safe currently. I do have safe activated on this plane. You saw the double dance. The other thing, too, when you plug it in the batteries, it's such a pain to put the battery in this thing. Uh, it will wait. It'll beep, 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 and it'll just do that the whole time you're getting ready. So as soon as you lay it down, it's gonna take a second or two. It's gonna initiate once it's in its home position, okay? That's very important to know because it is a pain to get the battery in this thing. Throttle cuts off, take off flaps, landing flaps. Okay, we're gonna taxi it, look at the ground handling. Very calm right now, no wind to speak of right at the moment, just a little bit of gust, or excuse me, a little bit of breezes here and there. I do have the internal lights on as well as the body lights on, but it's too bright to see. So we're gonna try this, just regular stole takeoff. Oh yeah, that thing's got, oh, it's accelerating away from us. Okay. Man, that thing is responsive. Okay, here we go. Very easy to fly, very easy to fly. Very, 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 very easy to fly, okay? Let's try safe here on a pass. Here, safe. No hands. Get into the power a little bit. Out of safe. Man, it'll just do anything. It's kind of freaky. Looks like they have braking set up there. Wowzers. It's just ultra responsive. Take off flaps here, just so we can slow it down a little bit. A little upside down flight. And out of that. Let's go into the bowl here, Han, so we've got a nice green backdrop for the people to see at home. We'll do a hammerhead. Here are full landing flaps, I should say. Here, we'll see how slow we can get it going. Of course, there's a little bit of wind left to right here. Excuse me, right to left. Going into the wind now. Try for a hammerhead here. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch into our high expo mode, our crazy expo mode, which will help me on that. Okay, full landing flaps here. Very touchy controls. Getting into the throttle hard. Very easy to hammerhead. I know you guys are better than I am at 3D stuff. I'm 
not actually a 3d pilot at all it might look like that but that's just accident avoidance <laughs> some of this stuff happens by accident and some happens on purpose I want to try to get a flat spin here if I can get it. Oh, let's try it this way. Nah, dang it. I did it wrong. I want to go off a few mistakes. There we go. We'll go up a little higher this time. Try the same. There's a way you can kind of kick it into that flat spin a little easier. Under power that time. You catching all this, hon? I hope so. Sounds cool. Mm -hmm. Through the trees. Scared a bird out, it looks like. Man, that was weird. I want to try a landing here. I'm going to go back to my not so crazy controls. I want to turn those things up. I want to have a little bit more crazy authority for that. Hey, trade me spots here. Very easy to land. This thing's going to land in like no distance at all. Using the rudder to help slow me down. Not taking it. Not taking it, guys. Need a better, better landing than that. Full landing flats. We're just going to bring it in with about 15, 10% throttle, 8% throttle. That's going to, believe it or not, slow it down quite a bit. Got the regular timber bounce. Mm -hmm. Don't you be rubbing your wings on the ground. All right, guys. That was on 3S, and that was insane. All right, throttle cuts on and tested. Going into system setup. Dual rates and expo. Not system setup, function list. The regular, I want to put it to like minus 30. Okay. Regular flight mode, I want to go up to about, let's do 10 on ailerons. No, you know what? This will be regular flight mode. It's going to be regular. I want to make it a little more relaxing to fly. Elevator is going to be more like 20. On the top setting, I'm going to put that to like 35. And then on rudder, let's change that to minus 30. It's going to be crazy, guys. 15. And let's go back over to elevator. Did I change the top setting? I did not. Let's do. Now, what does that do for you? It makes the sticks even more crazy than what you normally have. Um, Expo is supposed to dampen the middle of the sticks, but you can go minus, and that's what you want for a 3D plane like this. Let's check our battery voltages. Everything's been, oh, wait, wait, step back just a little bit. We're gonna test our backward backward uh, thrust here. Oh yeah, buddy, that is so cool. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. All right, we gotta, do, we gotta do some flying here. We're gonna back up to the back of the runway here. Not used to backing backward like <laughs> this, it's pretty awesome. Okay, we're gonna flip it while moving and see if it blows it up. Nope. Beautiful flight, beautiful flight. Why is she auto leveling? There we go, I was in safe guys, forget it. My bad. Okay, in safe. I just want to, I'm just going to try landing here with save. Boy, this thing is actually really easy to fly on safe. It's weird. It's like, it's so responsive that safe doesn't really bother me. It's strange. Look at those gear sleds. Why are you doing this, Timber? 
Okay, we're gonna tr we're gonna try this again, but we're gonna check the voltage first. Okay, I'm I'm really excited to try the reverse thrust. I want to do some crazy stuff with it. I don't think it's gonna be as crazy as I think, but uh, we're gonna still try it. Okay, so I don't know if you guys saw this because you haven't seen it yet because we're gonna do the unbox next. But basically, you can unplug this thing and it shuts off your your body lights. Okay, just by unplug that JST. Um, as with previous timbers, getting the battery in and out is by far the worst part of this plane. By far, by far. This thing can handle a much bigger pack. I mean, in terms of weight, I feel like it's almost a little bit too light, which sounds stupid, but it's true. It's a little awkward to do this alone. My wonderful camera crew was helping me out the last time. So we're gonna drop this down. We have four packs to use here. We don't necessarily have to use all four. 27%, 28%. Okay, well, that's about right then. So the timer was not like super far off, but I mean, you could definitely push the packs more. We're gonna jump it up to 4S this time. We started from 98% on that charge. 97% on this one. So we'll go ahead and uh, plop that one in there. Obviously we have stick down, throttle off in forward mode, safe is off, okay? So I'm just gonna plug this in. I wanna show you that beeping thing I was talking about, folks. Whoops. Sorry. Okay, now listen to the beeps. There's the beeps, beep. Beep. So it's gonna keep doing that until you flip it over for the first time, okay, folks? So, like I said, probably the worst part of flying this plane is getting the stupid batteries in. And to be honest with you, there's gotta be a better way, Horizon, come on. Like, this is ridiculous, get in there. Yeah, how do you do that with two hands only? What, are you saying how to handicap people fly? <laughs> how do you put the battery in by yourself? Well, it's just, you can get it, but it's a real pain in the neck. And thank goodness they got these Velcro straps or you'd be totally screwed. You know, in my big timber, I had a big old stuffing piece of foam and I would stuff it in the hole and then it would work. That's the way I did it. I, I never used those stupid straps. I think I broke the straps on the first flight. Okay, this is ridiculous. I'm just gonna have to try to use two hands like this. See, see guys, Horizon, you gotta do something about this. This is not cool. Of all things that need of like a battery things. tray. <laughs> yeah, especially a 3D plane because placement's gonna be critical, especially if people are trying to do tail heavy setups. Um, I mean, it's, it's definitely a forgivable thing because it's a good plane. It feels really good in the air. Now listen, it's gonna stop beeping. Yep, it knows it's home, so it goes and starts up. Okay, draw cuts on, tested. All right, so we're gonna taxi out. This is 4S, folks. Full landing flaps here. Why don't you, uh, let's, yeah, let's go here. Let's go out into the, into the, the bowl, okay? Okay. So I wanna show the people a stool takeoff. I mean, stool's kind of a joke. This thing's so powerful. I mean, you don't even need a runway. Uh, you could practically take off backwards, you know. Just kidding, guys. You can't do that, okay? Uh, unlimited vertical? Yeah, I think that is. That's unlimited vertical, guys. It's very touchy. Very touchy because I have it in my high crazy mode. Oh, yeah. When you take it out of crazy mode, you put it in the middle mode. Look how much better it looks. Remember, I got the flaps on here. A little touch and go there. Man, this thing just flies. It's so easy. It reminds me of the big timber because it's so dang easy to fly. You're like, what the heck? Be harder. Okay, here we go. Guys, I'm serious. When a plane is this easy to fly, it just weirds me out. I'm like, why are you so easy? Stop being so easy. 
and it doesn't listen. It just does what it wants to do. There you go. Jeez, that thing is crazy. I've only shot a battery out at 200 feet in the air once doing that. <laughs> and it looks like I'm out of control mostly because I am when I do that. <laughs> it's so funny watching loops when you just have complete unlimited power. I know why they said four minutes for the timer, except I forgot to set the timer. Dang it. I'm feeling a little bit on the nose heavy side here too, which is unfortunate. Now let's try the ultra crisp, relaxed flyer. We're in it now, guys. It flies just like a real plane, a regular plane, I should say. Little grass touch there. Got the full landing flaps deployed. I could use a little bit more flaps, actually. Let's go over to the bowl, hon. You want to take my right position there? Just going in the bowl here. Perfect, good spot. About 30% throttle there. Man, this thing just flies so solid. And then fully up and out. Okay, let's try the whole flippity doo ha thing again. You ready? Okay, we're gonna try. We're gonna try like that. Oh, get into it, buddy. We're gonna try it again. Well, actually, hold on. Maybe I can hover it for you. This is one of those planes where it's actually kind of nice to have safe because you could get into some crazy business going on there's your 4s hammerhead not even really a question of if it can do it it's just a question of like how long you want to do it before you get sick of doing it is this one hard to film hun um no not particularly okay good let's squat down don't you tip over all right grass takeoffs and landings guys this thing is just so easy to fly it's like weird it's weird, that was my crazy mode. I feel like, okay, so we're gonna throttle cut this. We're gonna go back in. I'm gonna turn out my dual rates and expo a little bit. My middle setting needs to be closer to, closer to this on ailerons. Needs to be a little bit more on elevator. On rudder, it needs to be a little bit more, okay? Can you even see any of that? I think so. And then in crazy mode, I'm just gonna go a little bit extra crazy. It's gonna be so crazy. That's totally what you mean. No. No, I just want it to be more crazy for the folks at home. Okay. So now my regular flight mode is going to be a little bit less crazy. All right, we're in, we're in totally crazy mode on 4S, correct? I'm going to take off from not so crazy mode, just regular flight mode. Uh, I want to back up some here. We'll put the flash back on. <laughs> It's just convenient being able to do that. We're gonna take off the other way here. Okay. We need the runway, right? Man, that looks so good, guys. So gorgeous. The performance is phenomenal. But the stubby little wings, it just, weirds me out because it's so capable look at this flat turn guys it's just it's not even taking hardly any effort i just a little contrary aileron in there and they were talking about using a more aggressive pitch on the prop like that's nutty and you did the carbon fiber in the tail right instead yep. of the steel yeah if you did steel you'd be able to do even more craziness now don't forget the thing will still stall on you that's pretty good and when i say stall i mean it'll it'll like fall out of the sky if you're not careful 
Okay, so I want to try on crazy mode, try take off here. It's easier to recover when you do tip over like that because I have so much aileron input that I can spin it practically stalling. I was trying to keep it up right there. Like I said, guys, I'm not a 3D pilot here. I don't have a full appreciation for all the skills it takes to do that stuff. Ample pitch authority, though, I can tell you that. And let's see what happens when you go to safe straight out of a... Okay, there's safe. Did have to give it a little bit of throttle to get it to not hit the ground there. Okay, so I'm in safe right now. Safe is nice on this plane because you can save your plane, guys. That's the vampire destruction zone there. Now, when I'm in safe, it's real nice because that gives me a chance to flip out of crazy mode and go back to regular. Now I'm in safe with regular AS3X going on here. Gorgeous. Really, really, really pretty plane. Stall it in. Oh, we need to do brakes. We need to do brakes while landing. Oh. Yeah, we didn't even try that yet, guys. We're gonna try brakes while landing this time. Thirty percent power there, camera crew. Hey, also keep in mind you don't have a timer. I know. I know. Okay. okay. But thank you. Okay, brakes while landing. Oh, I can't get up to my. There's my brakes while landing. I didn't get to them in time, guys. See, my problem is I got to get way up to this stick, and mm. I'm not a pincer. I'm a regular thumb flyer, so I almost need to have a shortcut to that somewhere. Yeah, that is kind of an awkward spot. <laughs> yes, I know I don't have a timer, but I can't resist. <laughs> That's why I said it. <laughs> and yes, they do have braking on that motor, because mm -hmm. look at that prop. Yeah. It's braked. Definitely. So if you want to tractor the motor, you will bleed off a lot more speed that way, folks. When I say tractor, I mean you want to run it at low RPMs like this, and it will slow the plane down a lot more than you realize. Or maybe you already realize that. I'm not sure. Man, these, these are some phenomenal landings for me. <laughs> um, all right. I, I can't not do it. I got to do the, uh, the hand launch. What? I'm gonna do a hand launch. Oh, <laughs> that thing is crazy powerful. That would have totally done it. That would have totally done it. I just can't um, believe how fast it is. I know, it is crazy fast. It's powerful. Yeah. I love that maneuver, by the way. I don't know if you guys noticed. It's probably kicking the battery way up to the nose. That's probably why. <laughs> probably why it's feeling a little bit tail heavy right now. I won't hit you. I know. I feel like I feel like I'm not a good enough 3D pilot to showcase this plane at all. But it is a fun plane. Hey. Hmm. I'm trying to get myself in position. You stay where you are. You're good. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. You're okay. fine. Well, you would think with those stout landing gear, you wouldn't tip over quite so much. But look at it. It looks top heavy, doesn't it? Mm, yeah. I love that feature, but I, I got to mix something in. I got to mix something in. Where am I going to put that? What if I put it on my slider? If I put it on the slider, then I could come in for landing and then slider forward, and then it would it would cut the throttle going the backward. Because I just feel like it's too hard to get to. Yeah. All right. Are we just going to fly this until the battery blows up in two pieces? Well, you want to fly it. You have to fly it at night still. Oh, that's true. I can't to blow it up it. yet. That's true. We do have to get a night flight.
We haven't shown people grass takeoffs. Okay, so we'll do this. This is grass takeoff. Next to tractors. I cannot believe how crazy capable this thing is. It does remind me a lot of the timber in that it's just so perfect that it, it just flies really, really, really good. You could slope soar the thing. And just the way it flies just makes me think it would be a phenomenal slope soaring plane. The landing flaps here. Viper vampire destruction zone there. And squat in the grass. Okay, that's a little rougher spot. A little grass cutting also. They did not talk about that in the manual. What's the best setting for cutting the grass? Bounce and go. And that bounced really high. It's kind of weird too because I, I really like flying it with the flaps on. Just because it's so aggressively crazy. I don't think I'll probably fly it in my relaxed mode too much. This is my middle mode. I think 4S is pretty awesome, but 3S is plenty of power for this thing. If you want to go full on 3D, then 4S is the way to go. But if you're flying this just as a conventional plane, shoot. Just about, just about could probably fly on 2S, you know? The people are watching take off again. There you go. People are watching. <laughs> the people, the people. We don't know who they are, but they're watching us fly. It's okay. It's just like YouTube, except in our front yard. All right, guys, throw cuts good. on. I like it, guys. This thing is really cool. And next up, you may not realize it, but there's going to be a night flight with this and yours truly, the Night Timber X. The Night Timber X, guys. 1.2 meters, easier to transport, comes with leading edge slats. If you want them, we didn't install them. You can also run these as flapper on, spoiler on configuration where the flaps will operate. You'll see they, they have this cut out here so you can actually run those up or down, which is the other thing I could do. I could mix in a crazy control for these so that they would stick up and it would just make that thing drop like a rock and be cool. Can the camera crew ask a question? Yes, camera crew. Because people always want to know if it's a good, like, first, second, whatever plane. If you've had your Sport Cub, your little UMX, and you're comfortable flying that, could you fly this? Um, Don't know yet. You could crash it. I mean, it's not like it's a hard plane to fly. It's just kind of a handful. Mm. I don't know if that makes sense. I mean, you're married to me, so you kind of understand a little bit. Right. That's what I'm trying to gauge, because sometimes I can tell, and sometimes... This thing just flies so stinking good, but the thing is, you've got to be on it, because it can get away from you fast. Mm, which I would mean... not be good. Okay. And it's not just like it can get away from you fast, because you do stupid maneuvers. It's just... It's got enough power and enough enough control surface that you can over control the crap out of it. And then the fact that you can reverse the ESC and just all these different capabilities that we're not used to having. I'm probably gonna destroy this lipo, but this is gonna become part of the test. I feel like I'm probably getting there. She's losing power. She's losing power. This is it, guys. We're out of power. We flew it to death. Let's see how much we killed it. I was trying to do that. You know that Cub Crafters, you know, where the guy steals the Cub? <laughs> <laughs> it's resetting itself. Hilarious. Okay, throttle cuts on. 
Let's go see if we killed the battery. This is a smart pack, guys. All right, time for the smart commercial. Do you hear that? Yeah. Is that the... I don't know. It's the motor. <laughs> Great. We learned a new feature today, guys. How to kill a smart pack. I don't think it's dead. I think it's just complaining. We're going to find out. I hope I didn't kill it. That would be very unfortunate. It would be. Ugh, bugs. Sorry. Hey guys. Hmm. Watch, oh, just a wee bit toasty. Woo. But it's not. It's not on fire. It's, it's not, not puffy. Puffed. Nope, not at all. Not even remotely. Yes. I finally found a battery I can't kill. Hold on. Oh, zero percent. Oh, it's like geez. it's like my oil life monitor when I. <laughs> When, when I take the truck in for an oil change. Whoa, buddy, that's the way you kill them. Okay, well, let's let that one just, we're just gonna plug it in so you can see how hot it was. Hmm. Oh yeah, just, yeah, it's a little bit too hot. A little bit too, not 120. I think Horizon's uh, nomenclature suggests 120 is when you should like pump the brakes, guys. Oh, so see, you could have. I could have pushed it You could have kept going. Guys, I, I don't, it's just, it's weird because it flies so dang good. Is it going to be a good first time pilot plane? Heck no, no, no. Cause you're going to crash that thing like crazy. The safe actually works good. I'm really surprised because typically safe, like on the timber, the 1.5 meter timber, I felt like that thing, you could never get it to fly in AS3X without going severely downhill when you were flying. Now the timber UMX did really good with safe which I don't understand exactly why that is. It's just, you know, aerobatic or the, uh, the uh, tendencies that the aircraft have will sometimes make a big impact on the way safe works. And this thing just does really good. It's got a really thick wing. It's got a lot of lift being produced. Of course, with big control surfaces, you can do whatever you want whenever you want it to do it. But the thing just doesn't want to stall because it's got so much lift. So, I mean, you're more likely to high speed stall this thing because it's so fast. If anything, if you were going to do this as your first plane, okay, what you're going to do is you're going to fly on a 3S, first of all. Second of all, you're going to get yourself an actually more tame prop. This is a 13.4. You're going to go down to like a 13.2 or maybe a 12.4. And you're just going to have a little bit less oomph going on. A 12.3 would be better, actually. But the thing is, if you had a little bit less power and pizzazz, I think that this wouldn't be a bad second plane. Um, but it just it just does everything right now and that's uncommon So most new flyers have trouble with over controlling planes and this would exacerbate every one of those aspects that would not be good then. So the attributes of this plane do not lend itself to a first or second plane, but That's highly subjective and I'm the opposite I wanted to over control it just like everybody else But I felt like I needed the control so I could get away from obstacles so, and I've always flown in tight quarters. The whole time I've been flying, I've been flying in tight spots. So, all right, next step. Night fly. YouTube, the time has finally come. It's not quite dark. This is Timber Night X 1.2. It's pretty crazy looking. The whole <laughs> thing glows. Still got the awesome nav lights. We're gonna see how this thing looks. We're probably gonna fly this on 4S to start and then we're gonna do 3S when it gets darker. Just cause there's no reason to be any more crazy than it already is. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what I'm thinking. I wanna back up. I wanna back up to the runway. <laughs> cause that's just so cool, I've gotta do it. <laughs> Next we need to pull a trailer with it. Yes, but can you back a trailer with it? We'll just back it right up. Okay, full landing flaps. Look at this gorgeous sunset. Give them a shot mm. before we go. It goes, it's going to go all the way around. Mm -hmm. All right, here goes nothing. Oh man, you can totally see exactly where that thing is. Those front lights are blinding.
do a big, huge loop. I know, it's not very exciting, guys. The elevator's too touchy for me to do it. Back in the bowl, where it's actually dark. Depth perception is greatly helped by having these lights, guys. Out of the flaps. The spectators in the audience can go where they can see if they want. like a firework. <laughs> Love it. So cool. The landing flaps here. That makes you nervous, camera crew? Nope. Good. The power lines make me nervous. Power lines? Yes. We're a long ways away. <laughs> I know, but... Leading edge slats would help in that maneuver. Because you would just, like, the bottom would never fall out from me, uh, under you. Pick off flaps. Man, that is such an awesome backdrop. I love that. That is so cool. Guys, it is just, it's just a different experience. You gotta be able to fly your space too. Okay, we're gonna throw some safe action in here. Here's safe. Full landing flaps, of course. Look at that up against the backdrop. The backdrop, very dark back there. Okay, I'm just basically giving it one input. Just kind of pulling back on the stick a little bit when I notice it droop, drooping a little bit. There's your timer. How to save. Let's shoot a few takeoffs and landings because it's just too gorgeous to waste. And by the way, folks, for you at home not watching, the bugs are just starting to come out. I cheated so much with safe that time. Did you notice? I noticed it didn't tip. <laughs> okay, so it takes a second for it to change direction. That is stole. Does that count? Does it count as a hammerhead if I keep going up? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. By the way, you'll notice it looks different on the bottom. See, it's white. White on the bottom, red on the top. White on the bottom. Look at this power. Gets the gets the air moving across the control surfaces, regardless of your airspeed. I want to get a gorgeous landing, but I'm just not doing it. The frogs agree with you. Slam it down. She likes to tip because those wings aren't very heavy at all. Lines are back behind me about 30 feet. Oh, they're not. There's no way. Yes, they are. Oh, jeez. They are. I can't even get nervous. I've only hit them twice. <laughs> Depth perception is way better than mine, then. 
Out of the flaps all together. Okay, we're gonna go into the, uh, oh, we weren't even crazy mode here. Here's crazy mode. Save. Full landing flaps. With safe in crazy mode. Still have tons of elevator authority. Okay, out of the throttle, off the sticks. Basically self riding with safe. Limited bank angles now. Back out. You're safe. My crazy mode does make safe out of the frame. Look at this. Out of crazy mode. Out of safe. Flying away from myself. Boy, a little disorienting out there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Even the camera crew didn't know what direction we were going. I knew you were going that way. Just nervous about it. Out of safe. Going into my beautiful flight mode, which is going to dampen my controls significantly. Still have all the power. Sorry, camera crew. Right up against that tree line. By the way, this battery, we stuffed about 1.76 amps into it to get it back to 99%. This is the one that we just beat to death earlier. Safe. Full landing flaps. Notice the attitude change immediately. Into my normal flight mode. We're gonna try to put it right at our feet. You ready, camera crew? Mm -hmm. Ready to show the people your real camera crew? Yes! <laughs> oh, I hit the camera crew. That's cheating, isn't it? Do you want to check the battery? What? You have to do it and stop it and not run into me? No, uh, we're going to take off again. It's not as crazy. I think we're going to kill this battery. These smart packs are just ridiculously capable. A little bit of throttle there. We're going to use a little bit of rudder here. A little bit of rudder to bring it around. Chop the throttle. Bring it in the grass. It's blinding, isn't it, when it comes right at you? That's pretty bright. Okay, now we're going to go out of safe and try that again. That was in safe mode. Beautiful landing, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you, safe, for making me look good. Full landing flaps deployed, of course. Okay. Let's see. What? Safe saves the day. So by the way, we still don't know exactly what was beeping earlier. I don't know if it's the battery, or if it's the receiver, or the ESC. Should we check it? <laughs> Sorry, that was a dumb question. It's dead. It's beeping. It is dead. Throttle cuts on. Check this out. Check this out. It's dead. Just. There's an alarm. There's an alarm on something in there. Throttle cuts on and tested, by the way, folks. I don't know if it's from the telemetry. It's the motor beeping, so it must be in the. It must be in the ESC. Or but just if, low voltage warning as part of the plane. But if it beeps at like zero, that doesn't give you much. It's still flying, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. If you were on 3S and you flew it down that low, we're trying to show how awesome these smart packs are, guys. They are awesome. awesome. That sunset was. Can that I puts this thing to shame? Can I say on what? camera that was way cooler than I thought it was gonna be. Feel it. Not bad. It's 
hot. It is. Okay. You spectators, stay there, okay? We're gonna check this voltage, okay? This voltage is gonna be crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that cool? Yeah. It's yeah. Heavy. All right, here we go, guys. Smart. <laughs> we didn't kill it quite as much this time. <laughs> it never focused, but you can see zero. Here. You guys want to see that? Zero. <laughs> so evidently, uh, yeah, we know how to spend them. We're going to try the 3S just because I cannot resist. It's actually getting dark now. I'm sure the camera exposure is going to start being really it bad. Is. We're at 99%. Sorry, 99%, folks. Throttle cuts on. Timer's cleared. We have a four-minute timer that we've completely ignored. Camera crew, would you hold that, please? Yeah. Yeah, we're almost 13 on the video, and you didn't Jeez. talk that long before we started. It's a miracle. It is. <laughs> Even the bird thought that was funny. Was that a bird? I don't know what that was. Yeah, it was a bird. Yeah. We got our bat boxes up tonight. Start getting the bats. You're going to be freaked out by this thing. It is kind of a pain to plug this thing in, guys, but I'm getting used to it. Wow. Well. Great. And you can't unplug those lights, just for the record. I'd really like to have both both of those straps. What? Oh. Because, you know, I'm not yeah. being... I'm kind of doing some crazy stuff up there. Yeah. And I don't really want the CG to change that much. No. This is a lighter pack. You know what? It's good. It's good. What's the worst that could happen? Battery flies out, somebody dies. No big deal. That would, that would probably be the worst, yeah. Okay, here we go. Now listen for it. It's going to initiate. Takes a second. There it goes. Dancing away. Throttle cuts off. <laughs> Love it. Love it. This is on 3S, folks. Timer set. <laughs> Trying to give you guys a nice profile view of it. You can definitely see it. all together big loop nice power sounds like a sailplane yeah it's crazy safe nice recovery safe I did not do that recovery at all guys that was 100% safe I was hands off. If you don't believe me, too bad. It's dark. It's hard to see. This thing has power. Upside down loops. No problem on 3S, by the way, with flaps and a high-speed saw there. I forgive it because that was me piloting it into the high-speed saw. The landing flaps here. Guys, if you can fly upside down with flaps alone, that's a lot of power. Let's go down to the bowl where it's actually dark here. I want to see the light on the ground. Can you see the light on the ground? Yes. Yep. That is so cool. The neighbors are going to be like, what the heck are they doing over there? Great, now he can fly all night long, too. It's not like he screams like a girl when he's flying. <laughs> oh, wait. Except. Except that he does. That is so cool. Look at the ground, guys. 
That is awesome. It's like an orb of light. A beautiful orb of light. Beautiful, lasting orb. <laughs> okay. Whoops. Tripped over the rudder. <laughs> Depth perception in general gets weird at night, guys. So what you want to do is you want to just stay really close. Stay really close. Safe is on. Just stay nice and close. This is safe. Dark, you, have to, you have to whisper in a creepy voice just to make sure they're listening <laughs> ghoulish oh, here comes a car let's creep them we got a honker <laughs> we got a honker Hopefully that's fair use music. <laughs> Sorry, YouTube regrets to inform you that your entire channel has been shut down due to copyright infringement. Oh, for the information of those at home, if you didn't notice, my alarm just went off. It toned and vibrated. It was amazing. Manned aircraft. I think they're at least a few thousand feet. We're good. Man, that looks so good. Get another box. I'm just clicking away on my trim. Elevator trim here, in case you were wondering, guys. You can definitely tell when you're flying towards yourself. But as would be par for the course, no tail light. This time I forgive Horizon because you can kind of see it. I knew how close I was to that house, by the way. Sure. I did, seriously. I was trying to go close so I could light up the siding and just inspect if it's actually blue. <laughs> Inside joke. <laughs> Inside joke, people. Over my shoulders. That was a full flaps. The red and green nav lights on this plane are phenomenal. Did you expect to hear a crash? Not there. Viper style? Or wait, vampire, vampire. style. Sorry. Can't even get my own jokes right. Did I hear a beep? Mm. I think it was just the motor. Just the motor. I'm trying to land it on the runway. Right to left. <laughs> I don't think that would have worked in any other airplane. I don't hear it. I think it's just the harmonics of the motor. I mean, we are about doubly past the timer. That's a better landing, though. Folks, if you haven't figured it out, doing maidens on camera, maiden flights are usually your worst. You get used to them after a couple of flights. They look better. But everybody wants to see the maiden, so... That is the servo singing. 
That's what we're hearing. I know, but are you gonna like go tell it? I'm trying to kill this battery too, hon. I can tell. Just gotta get it flying, no big deal. No big deal. Nothing to worry about, nothing to see here. Just flying upside down with full flap deployment, no big deal. Safe. See, even safe doesn't make airspeed. You know where that battery is? Where? Riding all the way up at the front. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of safe now. We're going to land it. I can't end on that landing, you know. <laughs> it doesn't matter how dead my battery is. <laughs> Wouldn't expect any less. Try to get a beautiful landing here. Keep up the airspeed there, Captain. Boom! What other plane can you land half on the runway, half off? That was pretty good. That's awesome. Throttle cuts on. All right, final thoughts, camera crew? It's really cool. It's fun to watch? Yeah. You like it? I really, I seriously do. It's probably like top five? Top five? Mm, top ten, for sure. Okay. Cool. It's way cooler than I thought it was going to be. I like it. I like the looks. I like the red colors. I think it's it's just scale enough. It's got a little bit of that cartoony feel that you'll get with some of the 3D planes, but I really like it. It's it's really well done. It's complicated. It's going to take some reading of a manual, and I know that is hard to get past, but just look down in the description below, okay? Just click on that link and then throw caution to the wind and buy this thing. And watch the rest of the video because we read it for you. That's right. You don't even have to read it. You I'll just read have it to watch. You. Just watch the video. And by the way, I don't think it's going to show up on the video, but we are going to try. Right. Guys, look over here. You see all the lightning? Do you see the lightning bug? Yeah. You see him in the camera? Mm -hmm. oh, that's yeah, awesome. I think you'll be able to see him. And that's like only a few. If you go down on this side over here, you'll probably see 10,000 of them in about an hour. It's pretty crazy. It'll be amazing. It's almost worth pausing it just to show them in like five minutes. We're going to pause it and come back in five minutes. All right, folks. So we're at 21% on that pack. We're into the uh, thoroughly into the red zone. So for what it's worth, we did not totally destroy this pack like I wanted to. But I was saying how we're going to wait five minutes so you guys can see the lightning bugs with us. We'll just have to wait another five minutes. But just so you know, that 4S, we put almost the full capacity into it when we charged it. This 3S, we're probably going to have to put about, I would think about 1.5 milliamp hours per cell into it. It's going to be a lot of power. So we'll come right back, guys. All right, guys. So the uh, millions of lightning bugs have not materialized. And it's going to get dark here. Totally dark in a few minutes. So this little Easter egg, we just love sharing little things like this, but we don't even know if it's going to show up on camera. So last year we came out here as a family and there was probably, I mean, you, you looked around and it looked like the stars. It was incredible. Did you hear that? What is that camera crew? It's a peacock. It's a peacock. That's right. We have all sorts of those around here. That's all you get for today, guys. Thanks for watching. This was a huge, long one. But we know you'll come back for more. YouTube, Brian Phillips. It's been a long time. It's time to do this. You may be watching this after the maiden. You may not be watching this after the maiden. I'm not sure. But if I haven't mentioned this before, check the description. You can buy one for your very own. Also, if I haven't mentioned this before, which I know I have, check the description and I will tell you how to skip past some of this stuff if you don't want to watch it all. Because I know sometimes my videos get a little long, like feature motion picture long, plus, plus. two times. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, baby, look at that. Oh yeah. The Night Timber 1.2, guys. You may have noticed I never got a Timber X. And I'm glad I waited for this beauty. It's going to be awesome. All right, let's try dumping this out. This probably has a separated top and bottom box out. Nope, it doesn't. Uh -huh. Ooh. Yeah, that's so 
weird and gorgeous. Look at this. Look at this. It is the Night Timber X, folks. This thing is upside down. Why do they keep doing that? It's so confusing. Trust our boxers. There you go. Is that right side so up? Yep. Look at that. That looks so cool. I can't wait to see That's this thing. That's a weird box is, is, picture. It seems big. But see, this is a 1.2 meter. And the original timber was a 1.5 meter. So, and it's, guys, seriously, 1.2 meter. It is the go-to park fire class. I'm telling you, if you get a 1.5 meter and you're flying in the park on the timber, you're good. If you get a 1.5 meter otherwise, it's a lot bigger plane. It's harder to transport. Now, Horizon is doing a really good job with innovative connector designs and different things like that for people that have to transport their aircraft, which is most people. But I'm very fortunate to not have to do that much. And uh, when I do, it is still very nice. But we did it for a long time. We did it so. for a long time. Well, we only had to go a short distance, but going a short distance compared to going just as bad. I mean, it's just like less exposure is all. Okay, so unboxing so far, uh, you can see that we have a cardboard insert. It looks like, oh man, these Horizon planes are so hard to get out, which is good because that means they're packed tight. How many times have I gotten Horizon box with damage? I think one time, and it might be on the timber actually. Now that I think of it, on the one point five meter timber. So, but it protected the plane. It was just it box did. damage. It did. These boxes that Horizon uses are just phenomenal. And I know it's funny that I'm talking about boxes, but we just did another unboxing. Uh, and we had damage. A lot. A lot of damage. But the thing is, the plane mostly made it. Anyway, you'll see. You'll see, because you'll watch it. I'm sure you will. So I'm having to score this tape. Kind of a little bit non-customary to have cardboard yeah. boxes from Verizon. That's a little bit strange. Um, okay, so we're just going to start right at the top. Looks like we've got some some plugs here. Okay, just grabbing you know, this foam, it's this little edge, and that's like really loosely packed. Strange. Okay, so it looks like we've got wires to land. Looks like this is LEDs, L2, so it must be labeled for us. Nice insert bags to keep everything from touching and sticking. Wow. It looks, it looks super smooth, look at this. No dimpling whatsoever. And somebody's already pre-rammed into this hole. Ooh. There's all sorts of stuff in there. Ooh. Those are huge control surfaces. Holy crap, her balls. Look at that. That is huge. It's really like. Can you give them a closer up shot, please, camera crew? It's got the regular nav lights and strobes, but then there's also lights in the wing. Looks like it's using, they're using A332 sub-micro analog servos here and here. So that's a aileron and a flap. Huge control horns. Sheesh. Let's see what it looks like up against the light, guys. Uh, we're gonna have to go to a more intense light source. Oh yeah, this thing is hollow. You can tell, you can tell it's hollow because there's gotta be lights in it. And you can also tell from the panel seam here. So we'll see what else we've got. And it's weird because that gets wider. So they have a, a thicker wing, a little bit more lift. Oh man, look at this carbon fiber rod, it's huge. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's taped down too, what a pain. Carbon fiber spar, it's hollow. This thing is incredibly light. And then this is just tape. Ooh, there's a little something there too. That is hollow. Obviously very strong carbon fiber construction. Okay, this looks like a bag. Uh, that's the wing joiner, a bind plug, and then a couple of screws in that sack. That is empty, so I'm gonna throw that out. Okay, got both wing sections. Looks like the LED plugs are there, okay? As you can see where they ran the strip of LEDs there. Huge foam insert 
hinges here. They're actually part embedded into the foam. You see that there, guys? Kind of looks a little bit sloppy here. It looks like they got lube on there. Yeah, they got uh, lithium grease on there. See that? They lubed it. Those things move pretty free. But I mean, just look at, you can see right through it, guys. Very strong, very strong. But it just doesn't, it just doesn't give at all. I can't even see the carbon fiber reinforcement, but the plastic inserts that are molded in there, there must be something going in here because it just doesn't give at all. And obviously this will be, this will be for the tail, I'm assuming. Just like, oh, there you go. So you can see those mold releaser. See it going through, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys can see yeah, that. Yeah, keep it there. Whoa. There's your carbon fiber. Oh wait, that's just the LED strip. Either way, this thing's gonna be very sturdy. So I'm just gonna stick that in there so I can get out of the way. Uh, more plastic. You always gotta make sure they're empty, folks. Okay, it looks like you gotta flip this box over. There's cardboard on the other side. This this is just falling apart everywhere. It's kind of a mess. I don't really care as long as it gets in one piece, but obviously you're not gonna be packing it back up in this box. And I know some of you guys try to do that sort of thing. I, I've never gotten into that. That not to store planes, not taking them apart in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so double thick cardboard here. Some of the best protected planes in the industry. See this? Really complicated boxes. They, they use like crazy complicated boxes. They probably spend as long designing the box as they do designing the planes. Okay. All right, they lubed these two, it looks like. Yeah, they lubed them. Yeah, you can see there's, they did a, a silicone reinforcement there. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. Right there. You can see that goop. There's silicone reinforcement where they pinched this in the molding process. That's good. Obviously, we have the same kind of wire situation here. It's not going to be like a quick release wing, obviously, but 1.2 meters. It doesn't look like 1.2 meters. Is that in my head? Oh, that's because well, the, fuse, get, the fuse yeah. is in the middle on this plane. That's right. Okay, so we have a separator plastic here. It looks like just another wing bag that they used for that. Then we have a manual, not folded this time. That's nice, thank you, post office. You can see, that's pretty sweet. This thing's gonna hammer head with the best of them. Okay, another, something just fell out. Oh, the landing gear did actually come out. I thought they came out from the other side, guys. My, my apologies. Oh, wow, super soft. Check this out, folks. Look at that, it's like, it's almost like packing foam. That's so weird. See this? Feel it, camera it's like crew. Really squish, squish it. That was one of the biggest issues that people had on the first 1.5 uh, meter timber. And then this is glued on this fairing. I think that's called a fairing. It's just glued onto a steel piece, and then of course you got your springs. That was the other thing that people had problems with on the first one is they had this complicated spring design. This looks like a much simpler spring design. Uh, looks to be like we're gonna have to undo that screw and then hook this together. That is really weird. It seems like that should have been hooked together. I'm not hmm. sure why it's not. Maybe it was the way it popped out of there. It kind of fell out on mine. So. Okay, prop is next. Secured. It's got the spinner already mounted on it, which is a little bit strange. We'll see how that goes. Oh, yeah. Ooh, nice aggressive. 13.4. That's pretty good. I have a 16. Uh, I think I did. No. 14.65, I don't know. I, I went to a much bigger, more aggressive pitch. That's pretty aggressive pitch. Guys, if you don't know anything about spinners, uh, this has just a regular collet style. So we're gonna have to disassemble this to tighten that when we get it onto the prop shaft. Of course, this is gonna tighten down as that cinches down, it's gonna bite the prop shaft. And then of course, that's gonna transfer the, the torque to the prop. Okay, another one of these weird moldings built in. Got the fuse here, it's all bagged up. There's a little bit of damage on this package here. Okay, here we go, coming out. Just, uh, don't, I'm caught on a little, oh, there's some balsa wood in there. Balsa or ply, it's actually plywood, I think. Oh yeah, they use a lot of 
some protection on this plane. Just don't want to end up with Um, okay, so that's a little bit weird. See this? Oh, this is really weird. Is that oh. packaging? Oh, it's packaging. What? That's so strange. Packaging only. Not. That's crazy. Not for flight. Yeah, it's a little hard to read that. T and F are overlapping. That seems oh. like an incredible amount of effort for Is that just to keep the bag there? On there? Oh no, that's bound into the foam. I don't know if it broke out on mine or what, but you guys look at the finish mm. on this. It's actually a pretty good finish for being a not ultra scale flame. Oh yeah, got those two big lights there. Obviously, oh man. Oh my goodness. That's a mess. <laughs> not looking forward to wiring this up. It's not gonna be too bad. Oh, on the bottom, guys, seriously. Why is it always on, on the bottom? On the bottom. It's a float plane, Horizon, seriously. But I'm not gonna beat you up too bad. It's got an awesome, huge ESC. That's a smart ESC too. Looks like they've got two different plugs. One goes to a BEC, I'm assuming, or is that just for LEDs? You could probably unplug that. And then it comes with both styles. So you can either plug in here. This is an IC3, so it's got the smart connector. And then there's an IC3 male to female adapter, which has the takeoff for dun, 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 probably LEDs. It looks like it's going to a breakout board for the LEDs. Yep, here's the breakout board, guys. It's not a breakout board so much, but a controller module. Okay, so I don't think that is a BEC, but it actually could be. I'm just not sure because it's heat shrinked over. Um, gotta say, Horizon, epic fail on putting the battery bay on the bottom. But what are you gonna do? You gotta stick it somewhere. It's too bad this thing didn't CG out and you could put it in the back. That'd be awesome. But I just don't think that's real practical because you kind of need that weight up on the front of a plane. Typically, the tail boom is where you're gonna have a lot of weight. You gotta counter. That is a big woodpecker on mm -hmm. our bird feeder there. You show the people at home quick. Yeah. Well, he's hard to see. Yeah. Oh, yes, you can. That thing is big. Yeah. All right. So, next in the box, there is whatever this thing is. Looks like leading edge slats. Or people sometimes give me trouble for saying leading edge slats. Like you're not going to say trailing edge flaps. Except that a lot of people say leading edge Slats. What are they supposed to be? Just slats? They're just slats. Oh. But the thing is, I call them leading edge slats because people don't necessarily, people that aren't into aviation don't get it. This is like, this is like a flap that's on the front, but it's a fixed leading edge slat or a fixed slat on the leading edge of the wing. So you could technically put a slat other places, I guess. Okay, so this box did not Hold up very good, but it protected everything just fine. So I'm not too worried about it. It's kind of messy though. I want to get it out of the way. So with that being said, guys, the unbox looks to be a success. We have a lot of really high quality components here. I'm excited to see this thing together. Obviously, this thing. Oh, there is one other detail that we haven't discussed yet. <laughs> There's in fact more than just one little detail. I popped the hatch there. We have a whole other box to open, guys. Check this out. Boom! Anybody who knows anything about this plane already knows what this is, but we're gonna go ahead and open it anyway. I can't promise this is gonna happen right away, but it's gonna happen soon. And when I say soon, I mean I have no clue what it is, but it's gonna be sooner than <laughs> later. And this is something that is gonna be even more awesome. And it's the float set, guys. Look at this. So, if you get this thing and you want to fly it off the water, there is a float set available. And look how big of a box they ship it in. That's yeah. Believe it or not. I kind of feel bad for these guys when they ship this stuff because it seems like there should be a way to sneak it into the main package, but I don't know that there really is. 
Okay, so we got the floats, guys. Let's see if these things are quality. This is an E-Flight float set timber. Show them the, the part number there. Obviously, we'll link to all this good stuff. Yeah. Okay, so if you want to buy it, there's links below. If you buy it from our links, you do actually help support our channel, so we really appreciate you making that choice. Um, but mostly, we want you to watch the videos and learn and be part of this wonderful community and then buy things from our links. <laughs> All right, check this out. Mm, looks pretty good. You know what this looks like? Looks a lot like the floats for the Twin Otter. They could be the same exact floats. These are nice floats. These are high quality, high quality. Some of the best, best in business. All right, see this? Got a little bit of tape here, not sure what that's for. Don't think that's supposed to be there. I think it's an accident. We've got reinforcements here. Siliconed up. We've got the uh, any splash there. That's going to go up and prevent the splash from going up into the prop. Of course, we've got a spring, uh, spring retracted rudder. And the string is going to go up to probably the tail dragger. Yep, just like on the big timber. We've got two different clamp points there. You can hang on to it. Every time I let this fuse down, I pop that hatch and it freaks me out. So you can see this little spring here is supposed to go into that, that hole there. Must have just popped out. But anyway, that's, that's the floats. As you can see, these things are hollow. They're extremely light. See that? See the cells, guys? So we'll see how that looks on the plane. I think the scale is about perfect for this aircraft. You know, back in the days, there used to be floats from Horizon, and they were kind of uggo, and they didn't really match the planes. These things match the planes nicely. Um, obviously, the hardware is pretty heavy duty, it looks like. That's not anything surprising. Let's pop that out just to show the people what it looks like. Okay, so we got the uh, coated metal, which is always good when you're talking about water stuff. They are the same. Of course, that stuff is going to stick into this here and underneath this clamp there, just like so. And then the floats are going to run off of that. So everything you need to do that is included. There's also some spreaders here and then a bolt, a set of bolts. Okay, so everything you need to get everything mounted is included in that kit, and then what isn't included in that kit will come with the aircraft itself. And actually, I don't even think it's loose. It's already mounted on there, so if it's needed, it's already mounted. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just like the UMXs, when you get the ultra micro planes, you will actually get those with the provided hardware to mount the floats, even if you don't have the floats with that. All right, guys, so we're gonna come back. We're gonna do the build. And um, we'll be right back. All right, guys, so we're gonna get ready to build this plane. We got done with the unbox, cleaned up the mess, read through the manual, something I rarely do. Um, this plane is pretty advanced. It's got a lot of different choices you can do. I didn't know it, but the smart ESCs are reversible, so that's awesome. So we're gonna be doing that. Um, this plane is capable of having a, an aileron, spoiler on, flapper on configuration where all of the ailerons and flaps operate as ailerons or they flip back to flap action. I just want regular inboard flaps and regular outboard ailerons on this application. They're kind of big already, so I'm not sure that we're gonna need any more. I'm not gonna be doing anything too extreme on the 3D side. If you're gonna be doing strictly 3D, I believe it's page 19 and it's going to give you the advanced setup. Yep. The basic setup is on it's page, on page four. 4. So if you're looking at page 4 and you're thinking, that doesn't seem like it's in there. Well, it's because you're not on the right page. Yet. 19. Page 19 is so, the advanced. And yes, my camera crew started reading and then I finished reading. The other thing too that's noteworthy in this plane that's a little bit weird is there is a steel connecting rod that you can use the joiner rod between the, the tail feathers, okay? You can use steel if you want to do more of the 3D flying. 
if you want more stable flight. This is gonna tend to make you a little bit more tail heavy. It's basically a counterweight. Or you can use the carbon fiber that's hollow. I'm gonna opt for the hollow carbon fiber. Believe me, you're still gonna have plenty of stole and 3D capability. And then there's also a cavity here to include more weight if you choose to do so. It is not included with the kit at Bentley. Okay, I know that you guys don't wanna read the manual. I didn't want to either, but this one is pretty complicated. You may want to think about doing that. Obviously, there's also leading edge slats. Yes, leading edge slats, not just slats. There's slats, leading edge slats, fixed leading edge slats. So you have to take these things off if you want to install them. I am, I am still torn on whether or not I'm going to install these things. So for now, I'm not going to install it, which I just think this plane is going to look a lot cooler with slats and I think it's going to perform better on stole, but to be perfectly honest with this prop and either a 3 or 4S 2200 milliamp smart pack with the IC3 connector, this thing is going to be a powerhouse, probably on 3S, but we have 4S as well. Not sure what all I'm gonna review with. I'm assuming we'll probably review on the 3S just cause that's the more conventional setup. And then maybe our second flight will be on 4S. Just to wet your whistle. That being said, the assembly should go pretty easy in terms of, remember, if you're gonna do the four independent control surfaces, um, or rather not four independent control surfaces, but if you're gonna have this act as an aileron or an aileron and flap, then you have to change some of the wiring which again, camera crew, if you want to show them real quick, that is spelled out for you on page 18, okay? Yeah. It shows you how to do it here. I am not doing that step and I'm not doing this here. I'm not gonna do this, but I am gonna do this. That pertains to running the reverse, Yep. Sure. thrust reversing, okay? By the way, I wanted to show one other thing. Sometimes I, I leave, a lot of ambiguity. There's your CG, which is super ambiguous, because look at this. It's either 89 or 102. From the inboard portion of the wing. Okay, Horizon, seriously, where is that? Is that here or here? Here or here? That's a huge difference. It's like, I don't know, like 20 millimeters difference. So, the other thing is this EPO foam is designed to receive whatever type of glue you want to use. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's clear and marked. If you use accelerant, the paint may run. So what they're saying is if you have to use accelerant, um, meaning the accelerator or the kicker, this is the only painted spot on the plane, I believe, just here. So it might run. Luckily, it's black, it's flat black. You could touch it up with a marker if you wanted. So I, I go through these steps. I read the instructions so you don't have to, and usually it's just my wife reading them to me. So thank you, camera crew. <laughs> so we're gonna get this stuff out of the way. I may wanna put these on later and I'll just hold them for later. In fact, if we do flying off of water, this would be really helpful for flying off of water. This would not be really helpful for flying off of water. I would highly encourage you if you plan to fly with the floats, which by the way, the floats are not the same as the Twin Otter. The Twin Otter floats are quite a bit smaller. They're probably 25% smaller than the floats for this plane, in case you were wondering. So these are gonna get set aside and we will come back to those in another way, later date, we'll include that in a build update if we do that. So without further ado, we're gonna start the build process. It's pretty straightforward, um, but it is, like I said, the radio setup on this plane is fairly complex. So it encourages us to start with landing gear, which is what we're gonna do this time. We'll just get this stuff out of the way. As we always do in our build, unbox, um, set up, whatever you want to call them, videos, we are going to start with building it, and then we're going to go through the radio setup so that you can follow what we do. If you decide to do it your own way, that's fine too. It doesn't really matter. There's a lot of different ways you can configure this plane. So this is what we're going to do today. These things line up. There's a little pivot point here. Very, very advanced, very high quality landing gear on this. They're allowed to splay out like so. Camera crew needs to help me with the manual so that I can see what's going on. Inside this bag, you're gonna find all the little components and goodies, okay? 
There's quite a few different screws in this plane. As you can see, there's different sizes and different shapes and different lengths. Okay. Two plastic ones or nylon ones. There is a bind plug included. included. You do not need the bind plug because there's a button on this transmitter. So we'll just hang on to that for another use. We can use it for something else later. Um, I'm actually just going to take this off because it keeps popping off on me every time I bump it. So we're going to start with the installation of this. We need to have these screws, which are the three by eight millimeter screws. And by the way, these there used to be a time where these were actual size and that was super handy. Mm -hmm. But they've kind of gotten away from that as have every other. These are good if you have other side jobs. <laughs> See this guys? They used to they used to be actual size. They're not quite actual size anymore, which is kind of annoying. Um, Cause that was a really handy thing back in the day. So mine aren't fitting through very good because there's a little bit of paint, I believe, on the steel. I hope I'm picking the right screw. There's only three in this bag, so I'm assuming that this is the correct screw. We're gonna use a Chinese screwdriver. Be. We could measure them if we really needed to. Yeah, it's gonna go. It's just I have to I have to turn it. Which it's is the only machine screw. Like no, that's not true. There's a machine home. screw here, but yeah. that's only three of them. So if I'm wrong, I'll be. See, it's going. I just happen to have to turn it through. So you guys are probably gonna run into that too, I'm guessing. These do seem a little bit long though. Because you don't want those to bottom out. Yeah, they'll be fine. So if you guys are familiar with when you run a screw through steel like this and it bottoms out and it doesn't want to turn, in this case you have to just power it through and that'll clean the paint out of there so you can spin it. Okay. If you had a drill, this would be a good time to use a drill. If you have this problem, like I do. If you have a drill. If you have a drill. I have a drill. See, the second one went through perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to tighten this on here and we will, for the sake of sanity, pause the video while I do that. All right, guys. So you, you kind of have to slide this under first so that it doesn't get bound up on these locks. I didn't notice this at first, but now you guys can avoid the frustration of putting those screws all the way in only to realize that your landing gear will not come out of this fully splayed position. Okay. So once you get those in, then it can only go so far which is ideal because you don't want these things to gouge into your fuselage. So we're just going to tighten these down and uh, actually I think I might need to throw, do I need to put that? That goes into a different screw, correct? Yep. Yep. That goes into a different screw that goes right here guys. So it is, it is a different screw, this point here, right there. Yep. So these can be tightened. We'll come right back when they're tight. Okay, so we've got the, uh, these ones are 10 millimeter self-tapping button head screws. <laughs> what screws are? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I just usually call them pan head screws, but you can call them button head if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> so I'm going to stick this in here just like that. And then that's going to actually guide itself in. That doesn't feel like very good purchase. I don't think that's right, camera crew. I think you misled me. You know, I'm reading the directions. That doesn't mean I know what screws I'm talking about. I mean, she is a button head screw <laughs> expert. I am. I don't think those ones are right. I think we got to get the those ones. Yeah, these ones are bigger. Those must be for the tail feathers somewhere. Because yeah, there's a hole here. I bet they go into that. Because the shorter ones are to put the clamp to put them together. Yeah, this is the right one, I believe. The longer ones are, yes, they go See on look. the... So now I'm just gonna insert these screws using a screwdriver. You know what would be really cool is if they put little labels on the bag that said like A, You know what, there B, used to be a day when they did C. that. <laughs> and I enjoyed that myself. See, look, Ooh, yeah, buddy. Yeah, that's way better. That's cool. Okay, so that holds it in place. Obviously, it's splaying correctly. So now we just need to undo this little clampy clamp thing. And uh, that's a technical term. So the technical term. term. 
clampy clamp thing. So you do not have to fully disassemble it. You can just loosen them a little bit and that'll give you room, I believe. Nope, you have to fully disassemble it, don't you? It's called a joiner bracket. The joiner bracket, yeah, duh. That's what you said, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna lay that on this almost impossible to find anything to counter. See that spun out of the way? That'd be cool if I could just spin it halfway. I kind of doubt it's gonna work though. Oh yeah, that's gonna work well. So now I can just go ahead and see if these things slide through, which, oh yeah, look, just looks like the first one was just totally screwed up. See, they went right through. So guys, if it happens to you, you're not alone. It happened to me too. But I overcame. We're in this together. Alone. Alone together. Alone, alone together, except not alone and not in it together. We're in it totally separately for different reasons, under different circumstances, with different resources. last few months that's okay we're not gonna get into that right now we're not in this together we're in this separate very separate unless you have paint in your screw hole and then you're together if you have paint in your screw holes <laughs> then we're in it together and you know my pain okay so hold that up so it's not splayed past the end stop there otherwise you won't get your screw in and there's nothing worse than attempting to screw and then getting rejected It'll ruin your day. Sometimes it'll ruin your year. Your <laughs> year? Yeah. Depends on how severe the attempted screen was. I need a number two screwdriver, I think, to get this screw to go in. It just doesn't want to, it just doesn't want to go. It's, it's just, I think I'm going to loosen the other side because I feel like I'm binding it. It's almost wanting to cross the red. A uh, number two, number two. Oh yeah, that's gonna go. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not going. I hope it didn't cross red. Oh, that would suck if it did. I'd have to get out a tap and it'd be lots of work. Oh, sheesh. Okay, so we're gonna pause it because obviously I am just uh, screwing around. Okay, so I got the problematic screw lined up in the hole <laughs> and it was not rejected. So you'll be happy to know. So now that's in and this is in. Now I just need to take this angular device and stuff it into this hole here so that we can uh, ram the other screw back in, okay? There it is, guys, we got it squared up. Now, don't worry, if you drop this, it's not gonna stick to the uh, brushless motor up at the front of the airplane at all. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> oh, dude, don't pop out, please don't. I'm not left-handed, guys. I should have probably figured out a way to not do that with my Ooh, ooh, is it going? It's going. I think it's going to go. I think it's going to go. As with most unboxings on YouTube and build series, um, actually ours is nothing like those because they're short and concise. Mm -hmm. Mine is not. <laughs> so you were saying? <laughs> long and detailed. So this is tight. Oh, yeah, buddy. We're almost there. Almost there. The landing gear on the original 1.5 meter was kind of a fiasco, if I recall, to assemble. Do you remember? Oh yeah, just like it was yesterday. I'm sensing thick sarcasm. <laughs> I think it was a highlight of our life, personally. Oh yes, that looks so good. Sheesh. Whoa, whoa, okay, wowzers, whoa, that is good, look at that action, that is really good, I've already marred my finish, look at this, way to go, I already marred my finish, screwing up, oh um, gosh, see, what so a you get when you screw around, eh, that's all right, it was worth it, I'd do it again, I'd do it again today, you probably will, look at that, so what's next after the landing here, folks? Looks like we need to put in uh, some wires so that we can plug them in. And we also need to stick the joiner rod in. This is the point where you'd have to make a decision on which rod you're gonna insert in which hole. Uh, I'm a little bit, obviously this is bottom and this is top. And when I say obviously, 
I say obviously because there's this thing. Okay, that's gonna go on the underside. So we have to figure out a way to get all this stuff done at the same time, which might be a little bit challenging, seeing as, oh, look where the plug is, guys. That's super convenient, actually. I was dreading this highly. Oh, Crap, yeah. Crap, which way does it go, though? Um, it's obviously not keyed. Does it say? Connect the internal LED connector two pin to the ports where the horizontal stabilizer meets the fuse. Uh, In... yeah. Well, is it, is it, which polarity horizon? Seriously. Seriously. What the heck? How are we supposed to know that? <laughs> uh, yeah, that doesn't really show. That most definitely does not Wait, show. Wait, it's marked. It's marked is positive mark? and negative. It is on this side. What? Right here. Look. Hold on. I'm showing the people first. Is this like microscopic marking? See, what? That side is marked. But the other side's not? Oh, it's like in the shadow. Oh. It's in the shadows, folks. Look, positive and negative. Okay. We got a positive, we got a negative. Whoo! That was close. See, you just need a good camera. Man, they've thought of everything. So you can actually just stick this together like this. And then you can probably, since the positive is going, oh man, it's in the shadows again. Positive is forward on this side. I'm assuming it's probably backward on the other side. So positive, of course, in our case is red. Brown would be negative. That's speaking from my vast experience of never having done this. I was gonna say again with the of course. Of course. So this one here, Positive is most definitely on the rear. And you do have to ram the rod in first. Oh yeah, wow. Positive goes back. It's a two pin connector. If you get it hooked up wrong, don't worry. It's just gonna catch on fire. <laughs> just joking, I don't know if it'll catch on fire. It might. I'm pretty sure the LEDs won't work if you hook it up backward but I'm also pretty sure that it could damage the electronics, so just get it right. No big deal. Get it right, people, just like I got my connections on the A10 exactly right the first yes. time. No problems there. All right, so now these longer need, screws, yeah, they the, go in there. The 12 you millimeter. show the people at home? What, hey, what? you wanna show the people my hand where the screw resides? <laughs> no. See this? Yep. Compared to my Chinese tip, now, I don't think this would be something that normal people confuse, but I might confuse which way to put it in. Correct? What are you confusing? I'm saying if you put it from the top or the bottom. Oh, it's from the top. I'm gonna put it from the top. These are big enough, I could use a bigger screwdriver too. If, a... you, if you read the directions, it's from the top. That's You're true. welcome. Yeah. Thank goodness somebody read the directions mm -hmm. here. Hey, I actually did read directions on this plane, sort of. Sort of. I mean, I just the parts you wanted to. Just the parts that I thought might be confusing. Not the parts about how to put together. Not the parts that are confusing. Now, when you're doing this assembly for real, don't forget to hook up the elevator because you could be doing this and just like, whoops. Oh, whoops mm -hmm. again. yeah. You might notice it before you take off. Maybe. Like when it prop strikes immediately. Blows up in a million pieces, sad. and the LEDs catch on fire. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't be like me. Make a good video. It would make for a pretty good video, actually. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna flip it over. I'm gonna get my handy dandy, whoa, my handy dandy corner guard protection device here. But they actually make these things that you can stick planes in. And it's like really convenient. You know, usually people get them before their hundred plus. Plane. I know, but then you can't like put holes in your wife's blanket. That is true. I live to do that. So we've got this done. You want to show the people at home what I'm doing over here, camera crew? There's a little something going on over here. Look at this. These things are, are really fantastical. See, they snap on. Whoa! Snap, snap, and then they fly across the room, generally speaking. Okay? So I'm going to find the furthest out hole. That's one of the choices in the manual. I would normally do that anyway, but I'm doing that per the manual, as so many people like to say, per the manual. I am doing it exactly like the manual stated. 
Okay, so snap that around and you're golden. Get on there. There it is. Those things are surprisingly effective. This is of course where you're gonna put your float strings if you put floats on. Which by the way, the floats were kind of a pain to build on the big 1.5, but they looked glorious. In fact, I still have them and they were some of the best floats I ever had on any radio control airplane I ever flew. From all like three of them that I did with floats. I was gonna say. Or four, I don't know, I can't remember. It is a really good experience though. Really good flying plane, beautiful too. By the way, it's still available. It's just the turbo timber now. It's got a little longer nose. It looks like a turbo, turbo prop. So now we have to assemble the wing and then stick the wing on the plane, correct? Uh, yeah, wing okay. assembly, yes. So we've got one screw sack left. I don't know what that goes to yet, but we'll figure it out. This thing is tapered, okay? See the angle versus this? So that's going forward, right? Just in case you didn't notice that. Obviously, you want to put this joiner in here, just ram it in the hole, get full penetration. Oh, yeah. Woo. Wow. There it is. All the way. Do it all the way. Then, that thing goes here. So, if you guys were so unfortunate to have to take this apart every time you fly, that's going to suck. <laughs> Look at all those plugs, guys. Yeah. But they're labeled. Take like five or six just hours. buy a bigger car yeah it might be easier <laughs> no this is still so much better than it used to be yeah though. camera crew i don't know you did i was there you were there i know you were you were filming so now we have to somehow magically hold this whilst plugging in 475 plugs mm -hmm. i remember this problem on the last one i'm trying to figure out how i'm going to do this now i might have to set up a special jig for this we're going to pause it, figure it out, and come right back with an idea. Okay, guys, something we thought of. I don't know if you guys can hear this, but I am reaching in with a screwdriver. I'm pressing the bind switch button, momentary push button. Okay. We're going to have to press and hold that while we're doing all this other stuff. So we need to make sure the prop is still off before we, we bind it. And we have to make sure all the wires are done. And you'll notice that I have not secured the wing. So we're gonna leave it unsecured for a binding, okay? Just a thought. They don't really talk about that much in the manual, at least that I read, so they probably did. So we're gonna come right back. We, we figured out a way to, to possibly make this easier, and that is to lay this on the table and then kind of roll the plane on its side. And we, we think that that's gonna give us the best chance to be able to reach everything so that I can see what's going on while still reaching the cables, okay? So we're just gonna start doing this and it's gonna be done when we're done, okay? So we have a flap here. There's a flap left and a flap right. Now the reason that they are labeled is because uh, they probably are going opposite. So there's one that's a reverse and one that's a uh, standard turbo, I'm assuming. So if you get those wrong, so crap, now I gotta think upside down and backward. This is still the right wing, or excuse me, this is the left wing, that's the right wing. So I have the right flap. Why did they label it that way? Mm-hmm. Right flap, okay? Guys, you see what I'm doing here? I'm checking for brown, and I'm putting it to, so that they're aligned. Brown to brown, okay? Now I'm gonna do the left flap. This says F-L-P-L. Left flap, brown is going to my right. Left flap, this is the left wing. Okay, now we're gonna pull these out of the way over here. Then we're gonna start with something else. It doesn't really matter what you do next, just do it next. Okay, aileron. This is obviously the right aileron in this case. So there's a little there. And by the way, you'll wanna make sure that when you're all done with this, all this stuff gets tidied so it's out of those two control horns because you don't want your elevator and rudder servos can you get them a nice low shot okay so mm -hmm. you want to make sure all that stuff gets tied up somehow i'm going to probably throw in a zip tie okay so here we go and then this this lead is a special lead that goes to the smart esc 
and that's going to allow you to control two different channels on that one channel. Okay, so this is the bind plug. Okay, that's not going to do us much good once the wing's on. Okay, so this is going to be aileron left. Okay, so I have the right aileron in my hand. Do I not? Okay, so this is aileron right. Brown is on my right. You want to grab a chair and you can slide up like here maybe? I don't know if it'll work for you. Now I'm getting the left aileron. So this is on the left wing. And this is labeled as aileron L. So then we have, okay, so this is the light one. Oh, what's this one first? Let's see what this one is. Okay, so that's a light as well. It's kind of weird. Why do they have one that's labeled and one that's not? Probably process of elimination sort of assembly instructions. We're used to those. But usually when we're doing farm equipment, where it's like deadly mm -hmm. stuff, like actually deadly stuff. Okay, so this says L2. So this is L2. Looks like the brown is here. We'll just plug that in. So brown. Brown. It's interesting that they chose to do that type of connector instead of just a regular servo connector. I'm sure, there's a reason they did that. So this is L1. So this is labeled as L1. It's actually going pretty swimmingly easy. Okay, so that's in. Just securing them, make sure they're totally taut because there's no clip, there's no retention on these. And we have whatever this is, looks like it's gonna go to this, whatever that is. That is EFL 13854. I don't know what that is, probably a flight, con uh, like a light controller. So I'm just gonna assume that they plug in wherever they plug in, which would be customary. Stick it in whatever hole it will fit. Okay, so we got those all plugged in now. That's much less rat nesty than I figured it would be, but mm -hmm. it's still pretty bad. Okay, so now, let's see if we can see this. Okay, so I've got this. See what I'm doing, guys? I'm just trying to kind of gather all the leads together. And I want to have these all in one nice little bundle of joy. And then I'm probably going to have to gather, let's get some zip ties. I'll be right back. Yeah. Zip ties here, guys. So what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of go in here and tidy things up. Um, tidy wiring is typically going to help avoid getting things bound up. I mean, you don't have to go super extreme with this, but I just, I don't want to crash a plane over laziness and I would consider this to be laziness if you end up having a problem that results in a crash because of this. Okay, so you see this? These two need to come back and then I'm just gonna try to roll this over like that. This is just a bind plug, so we'll go ahead and tie that up. Okay, then we'll just hold that with our hand and we'll come around the whole thing with one zip tie. Just kind of not real, real tight. If you go too tight, you can actually damage these things. Okay, so that's two. And then the third and final. So there must be just like an, a spare one. I don't see another spot that needs to plug in, guys. That's probably just one additional LED light. There was a, like... Like the internal lights? Um, there's a diagram. Does it show needing one of them unplugged? No, it just shows like where they plug in too, but it doesn't there's say how many. There's only one, two, many. three, four, five that plug in, correct? The two wires? Yeah, I believe so. Well, that's what I got five of them hooked up. There's, okay. there's six ports. So they, I don't know. I mean, maybe there's, there's just extra room there for another one. 
which is cool. I mean, I'm always for having extras for the end user to pick. I mean, I've been known to add LEDs a time or two. So now I'm just organizing my, my bundles of wire. This is like a highly subjective process. So this isn't like my way's right and your way's wrong or anything like that. It's just there's more than one way to skin this cat. And I would not recommend skinning cats, especially cute little kittens, like those ones that are sleeping. Okay, so one more probably here. These things, these are the steps that will help your plane to survive. You don't have to do it. You can just jam it all in there if you want. But also it's kind of surprising because Horizon has been doing such a great job of making things like really easy to take wings off and everything. And you would think on something that's got this many cables, it would be pretty awesome if they had just like one <laughs> massive. Just clip connector. it in. Yeah, that would be nice. Well, some people think expected, but I don't know. There's only so much you can do with certain price points. I get it. I don't know how they do what they do for the price points they offer most of the time anyway. And then other times I'm surprised the other, other direction, just from a comparative standpoint. I'm happy with how much excess wire we have. I mean, it, it's still tight, but guys, if you had too much more, you wouldn't be able to get the wing on. Reminds me of my turbojet. You remember the turbojet 550 from Dynam? That thing. That was a cool plane. I had like the most ridiculous wire bundle on that because I had all the lights that would Fade in and fade out, mm -hmm. all sorts of crazy stuff I was doing with that plane. So now I have to figure out, you're going to have to get creative on angles here because I, I'm trying to get this in here, okay, so that this bundle drops down there. I do not know that you're going to be able to see because I'm probably going to be able to see. Yeah, probably not. Okay, so now that I have that this way, keep in mind I'm not actually finish assembling this. I'm not putting the screws in is what I mean by that. You see how that's going in there, guys, between everything? See how it's gonna go in between everything there? I don't know if you guys can see through that crack. I'm just making sure that it doesn't get bound up in those controls. Now, like I said, I'm not finishing this. Man, an extra couple of inches would make a big difference on this wire. I know I heard it. That's why I added that phraseology. You didn't say anything. Um, yeah, so I want to seat down. I'm just trying to see if I'm caught on something. No, I'm not caught on anything. It's just... What? Why won't it seat? I think it's just a tight fit, guys. So at this point, I can either force this down, show the people at home what I'm doing. I can either force this down. See, it just doesn't feel like... Yeah, why is, it, but... why is it not lining up? What am I hitting? Oh, I'm hitting this. I'm hitting this. I think what happens is I need to squish that down. That doesn't seem right though. Wow, no. I just gotta pull it down when yeah. I tighten it, so. Okay, so now we need to bind it. That's the, uh, the next step. Now, normally I would, think I would like to have a cleaner break between the uh, build part of the series and the radio setup, but this is kind of the way it works with some of these planes. You have to do the radio setup partway through the build because you have to still be able to get to the bind plug or bind switch. And then by the way, if you ever have to rebind this plane, I don't know how you're gonna get in there easily. There is an access here, I believe. If you undo these screws, you might be able to get in there, but I don't know if that's gonna do you any good. You can't get from there, can you? Because you can't reach it. Mm -mm. It's not long enough. Mm -hmm. And I can't, I don't know if I can feed it back up there. Worst part of the timber was getting the battery in. I think that's gonna be the worst part of this plane too. Because it's just in a bad spot. 
But what are you gonna do? You need that with the nose, so. Mm -hmm. Right here. All right, guys, next up, radio setup. I hope you'll stick around. The radio setup's gonna be a little bit weird on this one. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set up a new model so that we can get this thing bound. This is a radio setup for the, uh, the Night Timber X, which is 1.2 meters. So we're excited to get this going. Okay, so I'm gonna click and scroll down to system setup. Disconnect the RF, light shuts off, model select, add new model, create. Okay, so we're, we're going to uh, model type. We're gonna verify it's an acro airplane. Model name, this is where we're gonna type in the name. So we're gonna pause it because it takes a while to do that. Okay. All right guys, so we're just getting the last little bit. And this is my presumptive part where I put in the 1.2 meter so that I can have room for when they release the UMX. <laughs> we don't know that that's gonna happen for sure, but when Horizon latches onto a model, they, they do it all the way. Okay, so we have the Knight, uh, Knight Timber X, 1.2 meter aircraft type. Uh, we need to set this now. Um, now, obviously our, our first setup for binding is gonna be on page nine in this case. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back over to page 19 in English. This is kind of what we need to do. So the airplane type is airplane, or the model type is airplane rather, and then the channel assign, uh, there it is. One aileron, one flap. So we can go into the wing type, we can switch it over to one aileron, one flap, okay? We're gonna go next. We're gonna change that image to a plane that more adequately represents what we have here. That's close enough for me. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Let's do that. Do this and then we'll go back. So then um, I'll just hold my page with the side cutters. We're gonna go ahead and set stuff up here real quick too. So model type, okay, so we have a channel assign channel assign there. So we want auxiliary two is supposed to be on the A switch. I'm not sure if I want that there because that's my, normally what I would do for safe select in my case. So I'm probably just gonna assign it to D, but I need to make that work for channel seven, okay? So in this case, it looks like auxiliary two is switch A, hmm. What are they assuming Auxiliary 2 is going to do? That seems a little bit ambiguous here. Can you tell, camera crew? If you go to next, right now gear is set to A, which is channel five. They want channel, they want Auxiliary 2, which would be channel seven. Okay, so that's what they're trying to do. So. If, so reversing the throttle would be on there. That's a little bit weird because then down here they talk about this too. Switch A is only a two position switch. What the heck are they talking about here? If you go back to the basic setup, would it have that? No, no, I'm just, I'm just saying there's position zero, position one, position two. Motor reversing, <laughs> that is so weird. That's not a three position switch, it's a two position switch on the DX18. I believe it is on all of these. Hmm. I don't know about the IX-12 or the IX-20 because I don't have one yet, but someday I will. So anyway, I guess I'm a little bit highly confused about that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave switch A available for what switch A does. And I'm gonna change auxiliary two to D, okay? Then that is a three position switch. So one, two, three. So then we'll just figure out what we need to do. And obviously we're gonna keep our hand out of the prop location so we don't chop our hand off with the motor reversing. Okay, so select gear, we need to inhibit it. Oh geez, that's great. So I'm gonna go back, now I have to go in. Normally gear would be inhibited, but auxiliary two is gonna actually be inhibited because I have chosen to put auxiliary two to this. This is where changing things by one switch gets complicated. Select a switch for channel seven. 
in channel assign if you wish to use the reversing feature of the EVN Smart ESC. Okay, so I mean we'll we'll know what's going on because channel assign. They told us to inhibit gear. I don't know why they would tell us to inhibit it if we're actually using it because then this thing doesn't talk to that thing from what I understand. We're going to figure it out shortly. Okay, so then we got to go in and we got to go and do the flap setup. So we'll go to the function list, scroll down to flap setup. We're going to change that to I want it on B. So B is going to be zero is going to be zero percent with no elevator correction. One is going to be 50 percent positive. And elevator is going to be 14. That's crazy. 14. Then this is going to be position two is going to be 100 percent. Okay, and then this is gonna be 20% down elevator correction. All right, so then we want that to be a two second deployment. Remember that's two seconds from fully minus 100 to fully plus 100. So it's only gonna take one second for this action. It's also gonna take one, uh, uh, it's gonna take one second for that action too. So what else? It's all set. You can see this here. You can see that little correction on the elevator. Okay, so that's working. So now we can walk back. That seems like everything. So we gotta set up throttle cut. Throttle cut, this is another part that I'm not sure about because of the nature of this reversing, okay? I'm gonna set this to negative 100 and then we are gonna play with this and make sure we are 100% correct on exactly what we're doing. So throttle cut is currently on and the throttle does not move. Throttle cuts off and it does move. That's what we want. Throttle cut is on, it does not move. Throttle cut is off, it does move, okay? So we'll walk back on that. Um, so rates, they have rates, dual rates are low, are 70 and then high is 100 travel set servo travel to 100 set throttle cut to minus 100 i did do that as per the instructions this time so do we have to reverse any of these channels no so in this case the only thing i got to watch out for is my dual rates and expo did they talk about expo at the beginning of this one camera crew um, I can't remember. Go back to like page six or something. Because if they recommend some expo, then I can play with that. There's your dual rates. Here's your measurements, guys. Flight timer is four minutes. So we'll set that timer four minutes with a one out and tone and vibrate. Whoops. Tone and vibrate. So when the alarm goes off, it's gonna vibrate and tone. The flaps, they show the deflection amount. I am not gonna go through measuring that crap. And they don't talk about expo. Okay, after first flight, you may adjust expo in your transmitter. To expand the aerobatic capability of the night, the flaps can be configured to move with the ailerons. Okay, so keep safe. So the there are some things you need to worry about with SAFE on this plane. I'm just going to recommend that if you use SAFE on this plane and you're trying to do acrobatics like 3D flying, you probably aren't going to be using SAFE. So let's just make that clear. If you're using SAFE, fly it like a plane and then when you're good enough to turn off SAFE and just fly AS3X, then, then you won't have this problem. They do talk about it in this manual. Like I said, I don't encourage you to read manuals usually, but this one's just got enough in it that you're just gonna have to read through it. It's kind of a pain, but that's what you get when you have a complicated plan. So that being said, um, everything is... Oh, wow, look at this. Ha <laughs> ha! A 1365 prop may be utilized. Look at that. That's so oh. weird because I use a 1365 on my Timber 1.5. I doubt it. Probably 
But that's crazy because that would be incredibly, like that's the same prop that I have on a 1.5 meter plane. Maybe it's a bigger prop than that. Because this is a 13.4. 13.65 means it's like crazy more aggressive. Okay. What else do we need to worry about here? I think we're ready to bind. I think we're ready I to I think do so. It. Okay, so binding procedure, guys. Um, this is a part a million people will ask questions over the course of the next few months. Um, it's on page nine. Please refer to the instruction manual so that you do it right. You can do the binding switch like this, a push button on the receiver, or you can do a bind plug. Now, if you're gonna do the bind plug, you may have to put an extension in there so yeah. you can actually reach, because I, I can't figure out how to do it without. Um, so we're just gonna use the button, and that's why we have this partially disassembled still. Uh, first of all, for safety with the prop, mostly because it's in the way. And then secondly, because you have to reach in there and hit the button. So once we do that, we can confirm all the control surfaces are where they belong. All the switches are done the way they need to be switched. And by the way, there's only one switch. It's a momentary push button. We're gonna use this to press it. So throttle cut is on, throttle stick is down. We're gonna turn this off. When we're ready, we're gonna press and hold this and we're gonna turn it on. It's gonna go into bind mode, okay? But we have to do that while I'm pressing from the top, <laughs> boom, on that button and holding it. And then when we're all done with that, then we're gonna let go of this and we're gonna let go of that and it will be bound. It will dance through twice. That's what you're gonna know if you got saved, okay? Easy peasy. So this is the instructions we're following. If you don't want to bind with safe, you can use this. Honestly, if there was a plane that you wouldn't bind with safe, this might be it. It is a lot easier to bind without safe because you just press it and then it activates the bind mode and then you That's do your bind like a normal plane. Yep. And then it's done. So, all right, this is what we're going to use first. 3S2200 30C Smart Pack. By the way, this is cheaper than the E1 pack. This one instead, because it works in your EC3 connectors anyway. Anyway. You didn't hear that from me. It's pretty obvious if you can read a price schedule. So, in case you were wondering, that's what I'm recommending. And by the way, Horizon is switching to smart stuff, so if you don't like it, I'm really sorry. I appreciate why you wouldn't, because there's some pretty expensive batteries in there. Although I can say I have had flawless performance from them, and uh, I'm really excited about how good they're working. So, I have to stick the battery in. How am I going to do this? I don't know. This is going to be ridiculous. Can Because you have to have the throttle down, battery plugged in. This is not ready. Okay, so yeah, so technically I can plug it in then flip it around. Okay, so this is not going to be upright. It's not going to be in the flat surface. I hope that's not a problem. I hope it doesn't come back to bite me. But it probably will. If it does, you can laugh at me on the camera. Okay, so I have the battery in here. Don't care about CG at all. Don't worry about safety because there's no prop on here. Oh, that is cool. Okay. Flipping it over. I'd really like to have this level. I'd like to have it level. I don't think it's going to matter, but just in case. Okay. It's easy to see in there now. Ah, dang it, I let go. I couldn't tell if I pressed it. Oh. I gotta got do it again. Okay, so we're gonna unplug this. All right. We're gonna do this again, ready? Plug in. Just lining this up. Pressing, holding, pressing, holding. Look, look at the screen, look at the screen, look at the screen. Finding. Yes, yes. Let go. Let go. Did you see twice? I wasn't paying attention, so I was looking at seven other things. Elevator. I think it only Fire. went once. Get it wrong. Flaps. Flaps. Awesome. Okay. So but I think it only did it once, though. But does it say it'll go twice? Yes. No, it does. It says so, the same thing. On. We're going to unplug it. We're just going to unplug the battery and just do it again. Okay. So I'm unplugging the battery here. And yes, you can unplug the, the rest of the lights. I'll show you how to do that in a minute, I believe. 
So transmitter off just because it's a brand new fresh bind and we're on. Once the orange light comes on, your safe throttle cut is on. Not that it matters because there's no prop, but it's a good practice. Watch for twice. Two. Yep, it did. Times. Okay, so we're good there. So now, what we can do is we can see if elevator, rudder, ailerons. That is cool. And you see, obviously there's a bunch of lights on in there. If you want to shut them off, I believe all you have to do is just to unplug this one red cable. Safe is currently yep. on. We have to assign safe. We can go to monitor. We can go to monitor. I want safe on gear, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the sticks down and in. Okay, so I did it five times. It actually worked on the fifth time, not the 10th time like the last few planes. Okay, so currently safe is off. As you can see, it's not attempting to auto correct. Now safe is on, trying to find the quickest path to level. Okay. It's super so obvious. Path to level. Safe is off. Okay. So now I need to do one more change. I'm gonna to go to servo setup, I'm gonna to go to travel, and I'm going to go to reverse, and I'm gonna reverse my gear channel. Now you may not have to do that, but I want safe to be on when I pull this back, okay? So in my case, I normally fly with the switches down unless I have retractable landing gear. So safe is on, safe is on. That's the correct orientation for my switches. You don't have to fly it that way, that's a preference issue. All right, so now that's done. So now let's try throttle cut is on and tested. It's good. Throttle cut's off. Thing spins like a banshee. Of course, there's no load on it, so it's a little bit, you, you could cause a, a bad condition, so don't go too crazy on it. So that's spinning one way. I actually can't tell. It sounds a little bit different, but it's mm -hmm. probably not gonna be easy enough to tell until we have the prop on there. Or we could put the spinner on there, a piece of tape or something like that. But at this point, I'm confident enough in the setup to go ahead and put the wing together. So we do that. We'll just drop this in here. Remember, this is tapered one way, not the other. Okay. So we'll just drop that in there. Okay. So there it is. That's going to suck it down in there just fine. Okay. So we have these nylon screws. They're going to. Hold on a second. I have three screws. Why do I have three screws? Why do I have three screws? That's weird. Is there like an option that I'm not knowing about? That makes me nervous. I don't oh, remember. Wait. Is that for this right here? Is that for these? And they just gave us one spare? That could be what it is. I bet that's what it is, camera crew. But usually when I see extra screws like that, it means I forgot something. I know, but I don't remember seeing. Yeah, I don't know what I would have forgotten. I mean, the plane is together except for the spinner. And these nylon screws are humongo. See, it's pulling it down. Look at that. Look at that. It's pulling it down. By the way, I'm going to switch off of a number two screwdriver and go to a flat screwdriver for this one. Uh, it's going to give me a better bite so that I don't have to have it slipping and stripping out the nylon. Sometimes the first time you screw them, they're a little bit like tighter. Here we go, here we go. Oh yeah, wowzers. Pretty good fit, pretty good fit. We were concerned about that and it's, it's pulling mm -hmm. right now. Okay, for the people at home. This thing is nice looking. I like the size a lot. Very good size, very manageable. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you want to shut off the lights on this plane, it's quite easy. You're just going to undo one red JST male to female connection. If I understand the way this works properly, and that is right here. Oh yeah, buddy. See, you still got everything else. Mm. 
So if a guy were motivated or a gal were motivated, you could actually do that with a switch. Not in your transmitter, you could do that too, but then you have to have another accessory in there and you have to use up a channel, which I wouldn't recommend. All right, let's get this reverse thing figured out. Let's do that. So are we gonna pause it and come right back and show them how we did it? Or are we gonna play with it live and confuse ourselves? Let's pause it. Okay. Okay, so we have to basically put the prop on to test this or we can put something else on. I was hoping I could throw a zip tie on there, but it's just not gonna show <laughs> whether it's going <laughs> the right way. So we'll just uh, be a little bit careful the way we do this. Okay, so obviously you have to take the spinner off. It's got one screw, really high quality. Look at this, this is beautiful. That isn't really. ST model A1, 134, 330 by 102 millimeters. Okay. Nice call it, really high quality. So push that back on there, nice fit, really good fit. This is where you wanna be able to torque it down really good. Surprised there's not a washer on there though, that's a little disappointing. Okay, so that's on there good. Obviously on a plane like this, you need to make sure it's gonna be on there tight. And you always want it on there tight, but if you're doing hammerheads and stuff, you you gotta make sure it's not gonna pop off on you. Nice color. I like the finish, looks good. Any glare, hood, just like they would on a, a real one many times. This number two screwdriver actually works well on this. Better than the Chinese tip or the Craftsman tip there. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to figure out how we're gonna do this so that can be safely tested. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably end up having to chalk this somehow. So we'll pause it and figure out how we're gonna chalk it and then we'll come right back. So guys, um, you remember how I was confused, dazed and confused about the channel assign? Well, that's because I was confused for good reason. Come over here. When we go into system setup, the manual led me to believe that I needed to disable gear because it was supposed to be acting as auxiliary two. Well, I had that inhibited. I uninhibited auxiliary two, which I have assigned to D already. That's gonna channel, channel seven. That's gonna control your um, throttle. What am I trying to say? The reversing action on the throttle. Okay, yeah. so now we're gonna walk out of the menu structure and I'm just gonna go to monitor mode. Okay, so monitor mode is gonna show you that uh, on our throttle is, is on throttle cut. I'm just gonna hold the aircraft and then move that stick so you can see it's not doing anything, okay? So that's what I mean by throttle cut's on and tested, okay? So turning the throttle cut off, it's on and tested to also work, okay? So it's fully tested. Now, switch D, I wanna show you. Switch D is auxiliary two. See how it switches? So it goes from minus 100 to zero to plus 100, okay? Throttle cut is still on. Throttle cut still works, okay? All conditions, all conditions. That's the critical thing you gotta test. I already tested it just to make sure that it's gonna be safe. Okay, throttle cut is off. Now, make sure nothing happens, like we're stupidly reversing the throttle signal or something crazy like that. That's not gonna happen, obviously, because we're just controlling auxiliary two. It is two discrete channels are going into the ESC on this setup, okay? Throttle cut is off. As you can feel, the wind is blowing you. Now watch this. Now you can't switch this live while it's flying. I would not recommend it. You're probably gonna screw something up. Okay, switch it to the middle setting. Look over there. Okay. You guys see that? Now. Big difference in sound, right? <laughs> yeah. Throttle cuts on and test it. Now, let's fix our problem, okay? What's the problem, guys? The problem is when I'm in the middle setting, now oh, sorry, I gotta wake up my screen for you. When you're in the middle setting, which is zero, it's reverse, right? And then it's regular and regular, okay? So I'm gonna test that again. That's normal. And that's reverse. And that's reverse, okay? So right now, in this middle setting and top setting, it's reverse. And in the bottom setting, it's going 
the other way, right? It's going forward like normal. Mm -hmm. So I really just want to invert that. That's all I really care to do. So I'm going to go into servo setup and I'm going to go to travel and I'm going to click and go to reverse. I'm going to go to auxiliary two and with throttle cut on, stick down. I'm going to hold the plane and switch it. Anytime you're playing with throttle, you got to be a little bit careful. Okay, throttle cuts on. This should be going forward now, okay? Tested, throttle cuts off. Forward flight, reverse flight, reverse flight. Throttle cuts on and tested. Okay, what I want to do is I want to go back to monitor mode. Okay, here's monitor mode. And I see auxiliary two is at minus 100 now in the top condition. So that's flying normal, correct? Then this is gonna make it go reverse, and this is gonna also make it go reverse, okay? So what I want this to do is I want this to stay at minus 100 here and at minus 100 here, okay? Why do we want that, camera crew? Because I don't, I, don't I don't wanna accidentally put it in reverse. This is, this is harder to do than this. This is mm. pretty easy to end up in, okay? So I'm gonna go to mixing, I'm gonna make a new mix, we're gonna do normal, we're gonna tie, this is auxiliary two to D, okay? So, actually this is in the manual, let's pause it. Okay guys, so we, I, I just, it might have been the manual, I didn't wanna figure it out, so I just did it this way. I just assigned a mix, mix one to D, that's the switch I want to con control this setting. I switched to auxiliary two. Okay, so D is controlling auxiliary two. The rate is 100% on just this part, and then it's offset as minus 100. So you'll notice what happens. You see on auxiliary two, when I go to the bottom switch, when I'm in the middle switch, it offsets it. So it's basically the same condition here, here, and then it's the opposite condition. Okay, same condition, minus 100, minus 100, plus 100, okay? So now, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna walk out of the menu. Throttle cut is currently on and tested and securing the plane. Going forward, going forward. You can probably hear it, you can kind of feel it. Still going forward, all the way down. Now it's going backward. Very distinct difference, okay? Throttle cut is on and tested. So now, what else do I wanna to do to protect my plane from accidentally screwing itself up. I don't want to switch from forward to backward because I'm a little bit concerned I might damage something. Because if I start driving it the opposite direction under full load, that could be bad. So let's look at this, guys. I'm going into servo setup. I'm going to travel. I'm clicking and I'm going to speed. And I'm going to go, this is the easiest way I can think to fix this. So I'm gonna change this to take one second. Now that might be too fast, it might be too slow. Okay, we're gonna find out. Throttle cut's currently on. As usual, we test to make sure. Okay. Throttle is going forward at a reasonable rate. That part you hear in the middle is what I'm trying to avoid. Okay, so I'm gonna go Hmm, the only way I'd be able to do it is with a sequencer. I don't know if I care that much. <laughs> so I'm going to go into servo setup. I'm going to go back to speed. And my idea is I just want to give myself time to correct that. And for practical purposes, I don't know if this is going to do anything. I don't think it will, but let's try it. I just went to three seconds. It just means it's going to take three seconds to go from minus 100 to plus 100, which just means it's not going to go reverse. Quick. Okay, so throw cuts off. Going forward, it's just gonna fart at a different time. Okay, throttle cuts on, going back to servo setup. I should probably check with Horizon if that's gonna be a problem. So I'm gonna set this back to fast acting because really what needs to happen is if I was gonna do that, I would have to set up a sequencer. That means that when I have throttle engaged, that it would automatically sequence the throttle back to zero. Yeah, I'm not gonna go through all that work. We're not doing that. That's no good. That's a no-go. That's gonna be way too much work. Throttle cuts on. This thing is awesome. All right, the next test for us is on 3S. I just wanna show you that this thing has more than a one-to-one -one ratio, which means uh, power to weight ratio, meaning it will hover on its own. 
And we'll just, I mean, I'm not necessarily gonna fly it in here, but I am gonna show you that it'll hover. Okay, so we'll do that over here in the living room. We have 60 foot ceilings in here, so we have lots of room to run into the ceiling. You might wanna put your throttle forward. It's gonna be a monster. So all I can say is I cannot wait to get this thing out to show you how awesome it is because it is going to be awesome. Throttle cut is on untested, by the way. If you guys play with stuff like this in your house, be careful, please. Uh, people get hurt on two things in model airplanes. They get they get their hands cut and they have problems with lipos. If you use safe lipos, uh, safe batteries, you're gonna have a much higher probability of success. I'm just letting you know because if you're new to this there's a lot less guesswork and when i say guesswork it's not really guesswork so you just have to learn how to do it first secondly props people get cut up be careful uh thirdly don't run into yourself don't run into other people follow all the rules be a good boy it's not like me the flight's coming next guys please stick around in fact you've probably already seen the flight and if you're still here with us you get a gold star you are one of our favorite viewers and supporters. We really appreciate you. If you haven't already bought this thing, that's because you're still on the fence. Get off the fence, order it. It's awesome, okay? It's really good. Hopefully I didn't crash in the maiden, and this is 57 pieces now in real, real time. But for now, this thing is gorgeous, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. We might even do a night flight, because let's show the people at home just how horrible the weather is right now. It is really horrible. I don't know if you guys can see the leaves blowing to and fro. It was like but it's, hot. It's while weird. this plane would probably fly in horrific weather like this, I'm not willing to destroy it today. And it wouldn't be very fun to watch because I would just be fighting all this environmental impact. Yeah. So guys, really, seriously, if you're going to buy it, buy it from our links below. Help support the channel. Be 